I'm Scott L. Miller. It's the 18th of May, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua, and today I'm going to be addressing a viewer's concern or point of interest about whether moving to Nicaragua might present a lack of opportunities in the future for him and his family. We're going to get to that right after the bump. I'm doing a more straightforward video in the garden today because going out and doing trips and, and recording while on the road and everything takes a lot more time to record, to edit, to upload, all those things, and I love doing it, but there's got to be some way, because we do this every single day, so some days I need shows that are a little bit easier to edit so that we can definitely get them edited and uploaded for you guys uh, and, and not fall so far behind because we've got so much going on, which means we've got a greater time recording and more interesting content. And the views have have really reflected that you guys are enjoying the new format and the new content and having Kami on the show. All of that is clearly uh, something you are voting for with your views and likes and, and we get it. So thank you so much for all the new people who have shown up, all the new uh, attention that we're getting. Uh, but we do have to find a way to pace it a little bit. So today I'm doing a show from the garden. Um, and, but I wanted to talk about, and I'm recording for those of interest, why it looks a little bit different. This is on the Insta360 X3, uh, which gives a little bit wider field of view, slightly different colors, all that stuff in different audio. I'm, I'm attempting my first full vlog using the built-in internal mics, which are really excellent on this 360 cam. Um, but I want to know what it sounds like. It's also really early in the morning. My coffee is is brewing right now. My actual goal is to get four episodes recorded today because we have so much going on. But to today's topic, this is an interesting one. Um, so the idea is, and this could be your your uh, not a retiree, but you're an adult and you're looking to move to Nicaragua, presumably from the U.S., Canada, Western Europe, um, and. It, you're worried that by in doing so, you're going to lose opportunities, that the countries you're leaving have more opportunities for you. That could be opportunities in education, opportunities in career, most likely, uh, and so forth. Um, in the other option is that you have children, uh, like I do, and uh, moving may present uh, a lack of opportunities for them. Uh, and, and maybe they don't have the same educational opportunities or maybe they don't have the same career opportunities. So I want to talk about that because I think there's two factors at play. One is obviously there is this thing of humans have this reaction to what I have is weighted more heavily towards what I don't have than towards. Uh, so that means, let's just say you're an American in this case, um, the opportunities that you currently have or currently perceive that you are likely to have as an American, you will weigh more heavily than the options that you perceive you might have uh, if you move to Nicaragua. Even if those opportunities were equal, you'll give more weight to the ones that you have. It's the bird in the hand syndrome. Uh, and it's logical for the human brain to work this way because whatever you have currently is more certain than what you project somewhere else. You have a greater degree of certainty about your decisions where you live currently or whatever your current situation is, regardless it's not rel uh, related simply to moving. So we're going to feel like I have some opportunities or I think I'll have some opportunities here. I don't know what they are. I don't know when they'll be, but I think they exist. And if I move, well, they'll go away and we don't really perceive where new ones may, may pop up. Um, so that's, that's the first thing. So that's m almost exclusively emotional and, and we need to learn to look past it in everything in life. Uh, because you get you get better opportunities when you weigh them more logically, when you weigh them more uh, uh, intentionally. So that's the first aspect. The second is that countries uh, will naturally, especially big ones, especially ones with, with the economies to do this, will do things to promote the idea that they have opportunities, whether through the media or education systems or whatever, they're going to make it feel like you have more opportunities when you are there. So those two things are important to understand that they are uh, emotional and potentially engineered to keep us from leaving. So you just have to kind of look past that and say, okay, okay, maybe I'm being pushed and it's not really true, all the things that I feel, 
learning to recognize that emotion and, and release it is very important. Now, from a career perspective, are there more opportunities, say, in the U.S. or Canada than in Nicaragua? Yes, that's pretty much a given, right? These are giant economies uh, that are doing really well, and Nicaragua is a tiny economy uh, that has a lack of job opportunities. But more importantly, if you're moving as an expat to Nicaragua, unless you're actually a Nicaraguan citizen returning, uh, you don't have the option to work here anyway. So you're taking your pool of potential uh, opportunities in wherever you're coming from and filtering that to only ones you can do remote plus any uh, entrepreneurial opportunities that may arise. Now, this is important. As an expat in a foreign country, entrepreneurship is far easier and more obvious than it is in your home country. So making a move may cause you to find a way to create your own opportunities in a way you wouldn't have done at home. And that's actually a really common path of things that happen. So be aware that simply by moving, you may create your own opportunities and have no idea what they were before. And just to give some examples, I know people who have moved here to Nicaragua and ended up becoming fashion designers and creating their own clothing brands and working throughout multiple countries, not because they're making their money in Nicaragua, but because moving to Nicaragua gave them the inspiration and the ideas and the, the uh, adventurous spirit to go out and do something that they were interested in and they were successful at that. Who knows how that will relate to you. Everybody has their own thing, but those kinds of things really exist and they're easy to overlook as, oh, well, that, that doesn't apply to me, but it does. People just like whoever you are, uh, that will apply to you. Now, something else that's really important to remember, when you're assuming you're a citizen of whatever country you're moving from and you're coming to Nicaragua and you're, you've, well, I've got this one opportunity, I think I can do this one job remotely, or I've got this thing I'm going to do, but what if it doesn't work out? Uh, what about our friend up in the mountains uh, who left his job in the United States to uh, rebuild his family's coffee plantation here in Nicaragua? This is a great example, right? He had a good job in San Francisco. Uh, he was, he's got a YouTube channel, like go check him out. And uh, he, he had a good job, he had a career. He gave up those things and he came to Nicaragua. Now he's a he's Nicaraguan background. Uh, his family already had a farm here, so he had he had some some you know foothold in Nicaragua that made it a lot easier to move and more obvious to move, and some reasons for I assume wanting to raise a future family in Nicaragua, being Nicaraguan. I certainly would if that's what you know if this was my heritage. Like I want to raise my family here now, and I'm not from here. So imagine if I was from here, I'd have a really strong connection to wanting to come back. Uh, so uh, so he made this move, and you could say, well, he gave up all these opportunities in the United States. Yes, he had an opportunity here. It's not that it didn't exist, and it's not that it's not a good one, but there's only the one that we know of and that he knows of, right? Like, and maybe he's got 20 opportunities, and, and he's just not looking at them because he found this one already. But we're, but we're going to say, well, in the United States, he had all these job opportunities. He had an existing career. He had a path. There's, there's just so much going on. And that's true. He gave up those opportunities, except he didn't, right? This is, this is where people forget, and, and we do this with all kinds of moving, at no point did he give up existing opportunities in the United States. Those opportunities are still there, right? If he wants to go back to university in the U.S., it's just as accessible as it always was. If he wants to go take a job in the U.S., he can go take a job in the U.S. just like he always could. None of those things are given up as future opportunities. He gave up the job he had in the moment. That's true. But he also picked up a new business that he owned, in the moment. So he made a, a uh, switch. Uh, and, and in both cases, he was either forced to give up the opportunity in Nicaragua to keep the U.S. job, or he had to give up the U.S. job to take the opportunity in Nicaragua. So there's two opportunities that were, that were presented to him as currently available, and he had to choose between them. And he chose the one that wasn't the bird in the hand, but he didn't lessen his overall known opportunities in doing so. And in reality, taking on his own business and doing something very adventurous has something like a 90% chance of presenting more future opportunities than simply going down a traditional career path. Following the path of least resistance is rarely, very rarely, a path to lots of opportunities. It may give more predictable opportunities, but generally many fewer and less interesting ones. So he, while it feels to us emotionally and probably felt to him emotionally that he was taking a very big risk in, in coming to Nicaragua to operate a coffee plantation, 
uh, the reality is, is that uh, if he's willing to put in the work, if he's willing to put in the effort, if he's smart, if he knows what he's doing in any way, there's a really good chance that he actually took the opportunity that makes logically more sense. It wasn't a super risky thing. Emotionally, it's tough, probably. But logically, it was actually probably a really good move. Because even if it fails, it's going to just enhance his resume and open doors to more opportunities should he need to return or more opportunities here, more opportunities everywhere. It's a big win. Uh, so that's a great example of remember, you can always return. You're not giving up what you had before, maybe a current job, but you're not giving up your situation that gives you opportunities. This is where people who are returning to or moving to Nicaragua are different than Nicaraguans who are trapped here. That is really important for people to understand that the, the factor that creates the severe problem for Nicaraguans, the reason that they struggle to find jobs, the reason that they struggle to uh, get opportunities is because of their Nicaraguan passports, not because of the language, not because of uh, a lack of opportunities overall, not by like none of those things are the fact it is this incredibly limiting Nicaraguan passport. Even just casually traveling within their own visa zone can present major problems, regardless of how much money they have. It's it's so hard to do business or travel or explore or or gain additional uh, experiences as a Nicaraguan, outside of any other factor, simply by carrying a Nicaraguan passport, um, there is so much pressure, even on its allied partnered countries, to either not honor their passport or to curtail free travel. Uh, I'm watching an iguana walk across the roof as I talk. Every morning I hear them making so much noise scampering around, they're hilarious. So in moving, um, I think you actually almost certainly uh, especially if you have kids, you are giving yourself and your children more opportunities. In all cases, opportunities may not pan out. You could stay where you are and the opportunities you think you have may not come to fruition. You could move and while there's more opportunities, they may not appear for you. Those risks always exist. But I think if you're looking at it statistically and from a risk analysis perspective, almost certainly moving uh, because it's the path less taken, because it's the adventurous path, because it gives more experiences, more things to talk about. Um, once you start moving uh, and living abroad and having multi multiple countries under your belt, it immediately changes your views of the world, changes your views of careers, changes your views of opportunities, um, and changes other people's views of you. It makes you a much more rounded, much more uh, experienced person, and that alone tends to open an awful lot of doors. Uh, and so uh, for yourself or for your children, I think this is uh, something you have to look at in a very different perspective, that you're not taking away anything that they had before uh, or that you had before, but you're giving them more. You're giving them uh, more exposure to different cultures, more exposure to languages spoken in their, in their native context, more exposure to different uh, political systems, different uh, economic systems, different legal systems, right? Uh, civil here and, and uh, <clears throat> common in the north. And um, uh, different weather, different climates, different uh, logistics, different driving patterns, just so many things. And when you put it all together, it's a lot of, of, of growth, a lot of human development experience that can be really valuable. Uh, and, and, and in doing so, for myself, bringing my kids here, why, why are my kids here and, and what opportunities does this take from them? Really more than anything, the opportunity that it has taken from my children is it has exposed what the North is like and made them scared to return. Um, and I, and I want to do a video about um, some awful stuff that just happened between Nicaragua and the United States. Uh, with with refugees that that's incredibly sad and I'm not going to put it on one of my regular videos but I am going to make I think another video and just talk about it because um, it's something that both sides need to hear uh, and basically just reading the news but this is stuff this week that really bothers me um, but the the overall right their desire to go back they want 
to make lives here. They do not want to make lives back where they were. And when we left, they were like, I don't know. I think I'll probably want to return. Like, this is temporary, maybe for a long time, but eventually this is where I'm. And now they're like, I don't even want to set foot there. I'm terrified every time I see the news. I'm, and they're scared for their family in the U.S. Like, my children recently broke down crying because they were so scared for their cousins who live in the United States. Um, that's that's reality. Like, living there, they were so desensitized to it. Um, and now that they live in such, such a safer environment um, and such a more free and open uh, lifestyle to, to, to know that all these scary things that they in some ways remember and scary things that they are now learning about um, that, that it, life is like in the U.S., they are uh, actively afraid for their family that, that is stuck there. Um, that kind of stuff uh, changes your perspective on a lot of things and the the overall opportunities should they ever decide they want to return do they ever want to go back to the situation that they had or i need to if i need to go back for work for whatever reason i've not given anything up i am two hours away uh it's a short flight for 141 dollars and two hours i can be back in the united states and interviewing in person just as i always did but in between now and then i can save more money, I can spend less money, I can have a better life and get more experience while I'm, I'm finding out if I ever have to return. And I plan never to, but if I ever needed to, that I came here actually puts me in a better position for the future. So for me, certainly, it's opening opportunities rather than closing them by being here. And, and some of those opportunities is simply a cheaper life, um, um, getting more for your money. Th that, those are forms of opportunity that prepares you to be able to leverage more opportunities in the future better. Uh, and so things like that, very important. Um, and I'm not saying that people should move to Nicaragua because it's going to present a bunch of opportunities. That, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that there's a natural emotional fear to relocation for many reasons. And one of them is that we perceive this value in our opportunities in our, in our home country, and we perceive a lack of those opportunities because we don't know what they are yet in a future country, um, and we don't know how our lives are going to pan out, and there's so many unknowns. Those unknowns are scary. Humans are scared of unknowns, and that's completely natural and unavoidable, really. Um, but you need to evaluate very logically. You need to step back and say, oh, I, I just don't know what the opportunities are, but I know they must exist. Right. And, and I'm going to find ones that no one else knows about. And my personal situation is so different than everyone else's. And that's part of what makes relocation and travel and, and all that an adventure. It wouldn't be adventurous. It wouldn't be good experience if it didn't create risk and create panic and create emotional feelings um, and, and give you exposure to new things, which is all scary. But they're also really good. Right. Most of the things that go on our resume, most of the things that make us desirable to companies and employers and and interesting and just more fun to be around come from embracing fear all the times that someone says you know what i did tonight stayed home cracked open some diet cokes and watched some netflix not a new show i didn't know if i would like it i watched seinfeld again it was my fourth time through i then i watched a little bit of the office because you know i miss it it's nostalgic and then i ate Yesterday's leftover pizza from my one pizza place I always get it from and went to bed early. That story is not what anybody sits around telling. Nobody wants to hear it, and it does not make you prepared for some great interview in the future. Nobody wants to know that, that you did the thing that was absolutely most comfortable. All the great stories come from, I stepped out of my comfort zone, I did something adventurous, I took a perceived emotional risk and, and, and put myself out there. And, and good things happen. Bad things happen. doesn't matter. Things happen, right? Make things happen, and, and that's going to give you more opportunities than not having things happen. That's kind of just the general rule of life. So in all of this, I think it's just really important to step back and look at all of it logically, not allow emotions to take over, uh, and make the decisions around what is best or perceived to be best or likely to be best for you or you and your family. Uh, and remember, you can return. It is not a one-way trip. It is not a guaranteed lockdown. The fact that you can consider moving means you can consider moving a back or elsewhere, right? You're not, you, you're not locked into just those two choices, the place you came from and the place you're going to. There could be the place you go to in the future. There could be the place you go to after that, maybe moving from place to place. Maybe it is a, a, a personal uh, a journey of, of looking for the perfect place. Whatever, you have an open road in front of you 
don't be afraid to go down it just because you aren't sure exactly where it's going to go, but the little dirt path that only goes a few steps is really clear. Yes, but it's a short and boring path. Uh, now, it does come up, you know, can you find remote work from Nicaragua if you're from somewhere else and you don't have um, a position or a desire to be entrepreneurial, can you find remote work? And right now, yes, the economies in the U.S. and Canada are atrocious and finding even local work is nearly impossible and remote work is extremely hard uh, as companies start prioritizing um, control of their employees over uh, quality of work or availability of work or cost of work. It's bizarre, but Americans, the American economy is panicking and in becoming an emotionally driven thing instead of a business driven thing. It's basically turning into a giant hobby uh, environment where business is no longer respected as a concept. Uh, and that's that I think it's going to be the thing that hurts the American economy the most because the U.S.'s strength has always been in approaching business logically and treating it as a business, not as a hobby, as many places do. But we will see. But that is a temporary thing. The U.S. is having a massive swing in in economic trends due to uh, the the end of the pandemic, because the pandemic pushed people to remote. Companies didn't like having they felt forced, uh, and now they're responding emotionally to that and trying to push back and force things that don't make sense on employees. But we're seeing a swing. So embracing working remotely, trying to find remote work, this is a tough time to do it. But it's also uh, a time to develop a pattern that this is something you can do and make sense. Uh, but that is likely to get better in the future. Both Nicaragua's economy is just booming. You can see it everywhere. Um, obviously, this is a very poor country, so it's easy for small improvements to be very visible and for them to come quickly. Uh, it doesn't take a lot for the, you know, if you're in a really rich country, Switzerland, it is extremely difficult for the government to make a little tweak and, and see big results. Um, they're always, they're already tweaked pretty well with a strong economy and they're always just trying to keep it from going off the rails. Uh, and here, it went off the rails long ago and they've been putting the train back on the tracks. And once the train's on the tracks and starts rolling, it feels like there's a huge improvement, even though it's not a high-speed train yet. It's not like a maglev or anything like that. It's just a normal train going down the tracks. But now we have a train on the tracks and everyone's like, we have a train on the tracks again. Uh, and the economy is really noticeably moving forward. And so much stuff is happening. You just drive out the, the door and it's everything. Construction and new buildings and uh, new roads and new internet and new projects and new this and that. Parks everywhere. So much is happening. It is clear uh, that the economy is is so much better than it has been uh, and just, just keeps ratcheting up. Uh, whereas whenever we visit the U.S., we have a, whoa, everything's falling apart. It's pulling back feeling. Uh, so it's, that's really noticeable. That's not going to hold forever, right? Nicaragua hopefully will keep moving on this path, but the United States always has its ebbs and flows. Uh, it is expected to turn around in the next couple of years, uh, and then remote work is going to become more available. Things will, you know, it, it, you can't base too much of your decision making off of how situations are right this moment because they change all the time. The best thing is to be flexible and take advantage of the future that you can see in the short term and be prepared to make changes in the future past that point as needed. That's where your maximum benefit is going to come from in all cases. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe if you like to support the channel, which would help a lot. Please do. Hop up here, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. Send me a coffee or two or three, and that helps pay for cameras and travel and all the things that we do here on the show. If you're looking for assistance in relocating or you want a personal tour guide that's going to take you up and down the coast or up into the mountain cities and show you things that you never thought you'd go see because you're not sure how to do it, shoot us an email, info at relocatenicaragua.com. Uh, that is something that we do, whether it's helping you look for a house or just you want to do an on-phone consultation to ask some personal questions and get real answers and feedback uh, or tour guides, things like that. Um, I'm Depending on where you go and what you do, it could be me out with the camera going with you to see some really interesting places, show you around and help you decide where in the country you might want to live in the long term or you just want a vacation, whatever. Uh, and as always, like and subscribe, share with your friends, post on social media, the Twitters, the LinkedIn's, the Reddit's. All those things, getting the word out there, telling people this show is interesting. This has got some information you may want to think about. Change your worldview. Take a look. Uh, that that really helps. So we're always trying to get more viewership here and uh, keep an eye out for us on the TV stations. If you're here in Nicaragua, we hear we're going to be on more and more. We're really uh, looking forward to 
more interaction with other media and and helping to get some exposure to this channel which by the way with Kemi here on the show this week our numbers are up so much we are now competing with the Spanish language shows in the country not just the English language shows in the country which is amazing especially as they've been around a long time and have huge uh sub subscription bases we do not we have a tiny subscription base uh of really awesome amazingly loyal viewers thank you everyone it's so great having you as part of the community here uh, but yeah, our views and everything, our, our watch time, we are up there with the giant, giant Spanish level official channels that have like full staff and crew and backed by investors and or nothing like that. It's just, it's just me and my camera. Thanks for joining me. I will see all of you tomorrow.